Tonight, what a new head of Xbox might mean for Microsoft. Mobile video viewing is up quite a lot. And what Apple is really trying to gain from this latest Samsung lawsuit. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 55 for Monday, March 31st, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Microsoft's Build Developer Conference starts on Wednesday, April 2nd, and CEO Satya Nadella is playing some heavy executive musical chairs. In an email to employees, Nadella announced he's promoted Scott Guthrie as Executive Vice President for Cloud and Enterprise. Former Nokia CEO Stephen Elop will run devices once the Nokia deal closes in April, as expected. And Phil Spencer will now head the development assets around Microsoft's video game console, Xbox, Xbox Live, Xbox Music, and Xbox Video, as well as Microsoft Studios. Spencer will report to Terry Meyerson, who was part of former CEO Steve Ballmer's one Microsoft reorganization back in July of last year. Julie Larson Green, who used to run hardware and content for Xbox, has moved into a different role called Chief Experience Officer, and Xbox hardware is still under Mike Angiolo. Did you get all that? A new global video index report from video services company Uyala, which analyzed viewing data from 200 million people, found that mobile and tablet viewing increased 719% from 2011 to 2013. In fact, in 2013 alone, the share of videos watched on mobile phones increased 10x. The company says live sporting events like the recent Winter Olympics and the coming 2014 World Cup and 2016 Rio Summer Olympics in Brazil will continue to drive mobile viewing and live viewing, and it expects viewership on mobile devices to double by the end of 2015 and make up half of all online viewing by the end of 2016. Get ready for more spectrum, everybody. Today, the Federal Communications Commission voted unanimously to open up 100 megahertz of airwaves in the lower part of the 5 gigahertz spectrum for use by Wi-Fi devices, which was previously reserved for satellite phone companies. According to the FCC, these unlicensed airwaves will help Wi-Fi networks handle more traffic at higher speeds in congested areas like convention centers and parks and airports. Cisco Systems estimates that by 2018, Wi-Fi networks will carry more cell phone traffic than traditional cellular networks. Commissioner Jessica Rosenworcel has also asked the FCC to consider opening space in the 3.5 gigahertz and 600 megahertz spectrum bands, which the FCC is scheduled to auction off in mid-2015. Mobile payments provider Square announced today on its blog that it's partnered with Bitcoin exchange Coinbase and that Bitcoin can now be used to buy goods and services with Square Market as of today. Shoppers can pay using the virtual currency on Square's online storefront, including items from merchants. The company has streamlined it on the buyer side with QR code scanning for mobile Bitcoin wallets, and the selling party automatically gets the amount for whatever they sold in U.S. dollars in the full amount of U.S. dollars the product or service was advertised at with no additional transaction fees. Coming up, the April Fool's pranks have started <laughs> day early. Can you find all the Pokemon on Google Maps? Mm -hmm. We'll try a little bit later. And up next, Adam Satriano from Bloomberg is here to talk a little bit more about this second lawsuit from Apple to Samsung. Those companies just can't get along. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, from industry experts. With a subscription, members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering all sorts of tech skills that will interest them, creative techniques, business strategies, all sorts of stuff. You want to improve your photography? Lynda.com can help you. New software, new web design skills. Maybe you want to learn programming. Finally, at Lynda.com, you can find all of those videos and many more on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, your tablet, even your mobile device. Instructors are all professionals. They're experts. They're passionate about teaching. They're having fun. Each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish or just jump on to find a quick answer. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And... 
you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 and access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses completely free for an entire week. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N and the number two. Joining us now is Adam Satriana, technology reporter over at Bloomberg. Hey, Adam. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So you co-wrote the article, Apple's second quest for Samsung ban seen as stretch. What's going on here and why do you think it's such a stretch? Well, one of the, the big goals of, of this for Apple is to try and get a sales ban of uh, these Apple, uh, these Samsung gadgets. And that's the way you can really draw some blood uh, uh, in this fight that's been going on for, for years now. But the judge in the case has shown that even if Apple wins, uh, that she's not somebody who uh, is very sympathetic to the idea of cutting off sales of the products. Uh, and so that's the main undercurrent of why they might not have as much success as, as they want. Yeah, so there's sort of there's sort of a precedent, I guess, that's been set because Apple and Samsung have been duking it out in court for years. Mm -hmm. What do you think Apple is really looking to accomplish, especially since because of the way that technology progresses, none of this might even really be on the shelves or of interest to the public by the time Apple gets their way, even if they do get a Samsung ban? Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, there's there's a few things that are in play here. One is the trying to get a sales ban, but like you said, a lot of these products are already on their way out the door. And so another thing is to try and get the features changed. Uh, a big part of this case that, that started today with jury selection is about Google and the Android so uh, operating system that Samsung and others use. And the patents involve things like slide to unlock, or pressing, being able to press a phone number in an email and make just immediately make a phone call and those things. And so if they can win there, then maybe they can get uh, Google and Samsung and others to have to change the feature set. Uh, and then on top of that, there's also just a PR play here, which is that Apple wants to be known as the innovator and they want to be able to, to uh, cast Samsung as kind of the copyist. So Samsung's witness list has seven Google uh, employees. Some of them are engineers who may be able to say, okay, well, let's let's uh, address that slide to unlock functionality that Apple has accused Samsung of ripping off of Apple. Is that Samsung's way of saying, listen, uh, Google and Samsung are, are, are on the same side of this and Google is uh, obviously an extremely powerful company and make it harder for Apple to argue their case? Yeah, I, I think that's a part of it. Samsung and Google uh, have a, a lucrative partnership, and the two uh, struck a further deal uh, more recently about patent sharing and things like that. And so there is an element here of the two of them working together to try and combat this case. Uh, but it does feel like this case more than the first one, which happened more than a year ago, um, that one was much more about the design of the hardware, the, the rectangular phone with the touch screen and Apple saying that these sorts of devices didn't exist before the iPhone came out. Uh, Apple was successful with that argument, but here this is much more about the software, uh, the design, like the slide to unlock and some of the other uh, tricks that you can do with a touch screen. It seems that Apple and Samsung, again, this is, it's, it's a, it's a long, it's a, it's a long set of proceedings. Obviously, there's a lot of money being paid to lawyers on both sides. What what do you expect Apple to gain by this? If they're going more for software and design rather than hardware and the way a Samsung phone might be confused for an iPhone? Uh, I think they're trying to get some leverage to, to eventually get some point of a settlement. I mean, th these two companies have bottomless pits of money, it seems like, at this point. And so this could go on for a really, really long time. But if uh, there's a point where, one, the, the, the products begin to diverge enough where uh, there's satisfaction that they're, they're not copying them or, or using their patents anymore, then maybe they can reach some sort of settlement. Because Samsung is also suing Apple for use of a lot of technical uh, patents. And so they can eventually reach some sort of cross-licensing deal uh, that many experts think that they'll get to, but until, until this point, they just have not uh, been able to compromise. The judges have forced them to sit down and talk and negotiate, but those uh, have failed. It really sounds like besides the fact that this is more about software than hardware, it's a lot more of the same. Oh, it's, it's very much the same. A lot of the same lawyers, a lot of the same uh, people will be testifying. Uh, in, in some, it, I definitely uh, get a sense that we've seen this movie before. Uh, well.
Oh, boy. And if uh, and if it's like the other movie, it'll be a really long movie. Adam Satriano, technology reporter over at Bloomberg, thanks so much for being with us. And tell people where they can find more of your work. Yeah, you can check us out at uh, Bloomberg.com or Bloomberg.com slash technology, where uh, a lot of folks from, from our team's stories land. So please go check it out. Excellent. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. It was great. All right, moving on to April Fool's jokes that are just pretty dumb these days. Companies are now trying a new approach. March Fool's it starts before April 1st, actually. This one isn't really so much an April Fool's prank. It's not even on the right day. But Google has updated Google Maps for iOS and Android to include something you might not expect. At least 150 Pokemon characters. If you want to find them, all you have to do is zoom in and then tap on them and then select catch. So you're kind of catching them like a Pokemon catcher. I wouldn't actually really call this a prank. It's a, just a fun little game for a rainy day. In your fear in California anyway, it is raining. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss that one. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.